If you check out Omdena that I mentioned earlier on their website www.omdena.com you find a lot of projects that they work there. Why I'm saying all of this is because I look back now and I saw that a lot of the guys who volunteered for me on those projects, who was working with me on those projects, ended up actually working in some of those roles actually. We had someone who was one volunteering with us as an HR, who ended up working as an HR. Um, we had someone who was a back-end engineer, um, who ended up getting a job as a back-end engineer. That absolutely counts as experience that you can have in your CV and will definitely get you, uh, give you a higher leverage over someone who doesn't do, who hasn't do, done something like that. So absolutely recommend that. Having experience in today's job market is an absolute no-brainer. Especially now that we see companies put up job postings for entry level position and are asking for one or two years experience already. Then you begin to wonder, how do I build experience without having a job in the first place? And this is particularly difficult, you know, if you're trying to get your first role. Um, in this video, I'm going to be walking us through the process of how you can build a job experience without having a job in itself. And that can help you to get your first entry level position as a data scientist or a data analyst. Follow me. Now, number one way for you to get build experience without having a job as a data analyst or as a data scientist or as a data professional generally is for you to volunteer. Particularly if you really like working um, with social organizations and building things that impact people, I think this would be really good for you. Um, one of such companies that are very big on this is Umdena. I volunteered with them in 2020 as a machine learning engineer and it was my first time of actually working as a machine learning engineer. I, I worked with them for three months on a project about um, social media and the youth. And um, one thing that stood out for me there was the collaboration that I had with so many people around the world. I was exposed to data at a level where I probably would not have been exposed to if I was working just on my own projects. So it was different ideas, uh, teamwork, coming together and seeing people who were passionate, working with technologies actually, and I myself and seeing libraries used um, that I myself would probably didn't know at the time. So that was real life experience there. It was the same thing that, that I would experience if I had worked in a company. And there are many companies around, there are many organizations around the world like that, that allow you to volunteer for them um, without um, you being paid or without you actually working in a company itself. And that really counts also as an experience for a data professional. Um, for example, if you check out Omdena that I mentioned earlier on their website, www.omdena.com, you find a lot of projects that they work there. So they collaborate with social organizations around the world and you can click on any project that you feel like you like. You can apply for it. I think there's an interview process. You interview on the different kind of roles there. There are also leadership roles. So even if you're trying to build experience, um, as for data leadership, that could also be something that you can try out so you already have a job but you're just trying to build experience as a leader. That could also be something that I would recommend that you try out on and you interview if you're, if you're successful and they get you in on the project, absolutely nice. And for example, I volunteered with them in 2020 and I was there for three months. So you can imagine if I stayed longer, three months, six months, one year, that absolutely counts as experience that you can have in your CV and will definitely get you, uh, give you a higher leverage over someone who doesn't do, who hasn't do, done something like that. So absolutely recommend that. The second thing I like to talk about often um, is to build projects. I've talked about that again and again on this uh, on this uh, on this channel, but there's a different angle to building project that I want to talk about here. So you can build your own project, but I think an interesting part is for you to work with friends or families or colleagues that are building other kinds of project that might even be bigger. And this is what I mean. For example, some three four years ago, I was building a project called Kukumbo. Um, 
Tokumbo, the idea with Tokumbo was basically for us to build an app that was able to, you know, forecast or tell us how much a used car was worth um, from the properties of the car. So how long it has been, the make, um, and it was really for the West African market. And um, this project was really big. I was, we, we had, I was leading the data science team, and that was the first time I was going to be leading the data team. I had a data scientist, a data analyst in my team, and that counted as you know leadership, data leadership experience for me. We had a backend engineer, we had a soft, we had a software engineer, we had a product product manager, we had an HR, and it was basically like a small startup. In fact. The plan was actually to build it to a, to a startup, a field of course, but we learned a lot of things. Um, and why I'm saying all of this is because I look back now and I saw that a lot of the guys who volunteered for me on those projects, who was working with me on those projects, ended up actually working in some of those roles actually. We had someone who was what volunteering with us as an HR, who ended up working as an HR. Um, we had someone who was a back-end engineer, um, who ended up getting a job as a back-end engineer. And so you could also, also volunteer with people on, on projects, build projects with people that you think that are very big, big enough that the scale is something that you can add on your CV. So if you find anyone building projects of that kind of magnitude, of that kind of scale, scale, it would be easier for you to get in and then you can actually build real life experience. So self project is one way for you to build experience as well. The third part, the third uh, um, way you can build experience that I want to talk about in this video is also um, through free willing or social organizations. So, you know, I talked previously about volunteering with Omdela, Omdena, for example. There's also a, the, a different kind of volunteering where you actually walk up to an organization and say, hey, this is the beauty that this is the advantage or this is the promise that data is going to bring to you if you let me join you to work as a data analyst or as a data scientist. And then you begin to volunteer, you begin to volunteer with them. Previously, before I came to Germany, I was in Nigeria and um, I did something like this. I was very vast with um, LaTeX and I basically walked up to a university in the final year and I told them, hey, LaTeX is beautiful. LaTeX is a software that you use to type all mathematics, symbols and languages. And I told them, LaTeX is really beautiful. Let me come to your class and be teaching you. I'm just going to teach you for fun. You don't have to pay me. And that built, that was the first way I learned how to teach in, in a university. And I have that experience to claim whenever I teach now, you know, and that has really also helped me to get my teaching process even better. So you could walk up to an organization that you know, maybe you belong to a church or you belong to a mosque or you belong to a social organization and you can tell them hey if you have a data scientist here or a data analyst here this is the advantage this is going to be i'm i can do the job for you you don't have to pay me and you volunteer for them so for example if you want to become a football data scientist or a football data analyst you could walk up to the football um, club in your community or in your area and say hey guys come on i, I have the experience i've learned data analyst uh, data analysis and i can work for you as a data analyst and then you could do a good job and of course when you do all of this you can put it on your cv i worked as a data analyst I'm um, working as a data analyst in the last one year um, for this football club and that sets you really apart from someone who's just been home learning how to do the job. So you can get all of this together and, um, and I think when you do something like that, the most important thing is that you can show that you actually brought value to those organizations. So either you are working with a friend on a set, on a project that is very big, or you are working, you're doing a freewheeling, non-paid social um, service to a social organization, or you are volunteering with someone who coordinates with other social organization like Omdena, like I mentioned. The most important thing is that you are able to elect like specifically what you did in those roles either you worked as a machine learning engineer or you worked as a data scientist or as a data analyst the most important thing is that you are able to show what you did what value you brought into those organizations and then when you walk into an interview you are now completely different even though you don't have a job in code you are now completely different than someone who um, 
doesn't who hasn't done, done all this because you have experience you've worked you've seen how it looks like you felt the pressure of deadlines and timelines and you can show that for jobs that would even pay you much more in the future if you enjoyed this video make sure you check out my previous video where i actually analyzed 7000 data analyst roles advertised on LinkedIn and I try to find out what are the requirements, how much salary they pay and what you need to get those roles. Thank you for watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.